Alan Steely Dan here on the old Coyote Medicine Show, only on the Hazy Radio Network. No static at all, babies. Oh, man, if we ever give you static here, it's only so that you can clear it up, see it clear, you know, get it there in your heart, don't you see, man? It's oh, really dear. Here, I'm saluting you, babies, with my Coyote Club mug once again with the beautiful MJ Gateway to Paradise emblazoned upon it, babies, given there by my own little sweetheart. <clears throat> And knowing that we're listener-supported radio babies, oh, I expect you'll just want to get on over to thecoyoteclub.com and get yourself a mug or two, babies, and have a great time enjoying a coffee clink with us each and every day here on the Coyote Medicine Way, the Coyote Medicine Show. Man, where you happen to get your happy heart on and... Just get in the glow, man. Yes, indeed. Do a whole lot more than just strum and stroll. We rock and we roll. And then we talk about it some more and, you know, heal up our old heart and our soul and just get rid of the trauma and the drama and, you know, all that nasty shit in life. We just step there into paradise. <laughs> oh, wow, babies. You know, I remember one time I, I like, was making a journey, you know, and it was like going someplace inside of the earth. Now, I don't know if, how many of you are familiar what really goes on beneath the surface here, but there is some activity there. And I'd been involved in it as a younger person in this lifetime and probably in others, too, I could almost imagine. <laughs> so I thought I was going down to one of those places on this particular journey I was taking while I was sitting on the side of a mountain there in Oregon, man. It's many years ago. And, you know, but instead... I popped through, you know, this crusty thing on the outer part of the earth, and there was like what you could call an inner earth. It was paradise. And this outer thing just kind of blipped away. It wasn't there anymore. And everybody, I mean, it was still the same earth. There was all the same people, everything, except that everything was happy. There wasn't any industrial uh, things going on or anything like that. There were no smokestacks, no ships, trains, boats, planes, none of that kind of stuff. It was just happy, carefree, light, oh, and so bright, everything, everyone shone like the sun. The sun wasn't in the sky, it was in the life, in the earth. It was all around us, it was everywhere. Everyone glittered, the little birdies, the human beings, the everything beyond us, the angelics and the thunder beings and so forth. Man, alive! Everything was alive and glowing. It was like a dance, a big swaying happy dance, you know, where everything was in cosmic harmony with everything else, of course. It's an experience I had maybe, oh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, somewhere in that time frame. But son of a gun, it has stayed with me to this day because I knew that that's what the reality was, that this was, that we lived in, this matrix as we call it now, or the game, or the movie. I like the movie because it's a movie that writes itself. But anywho, it's an outer surface kind of thing. The reality has kind of been hidden right beneath the surface. Now that goes along in a mystical as well as a physical kind of aspects. And in the material reality, there's been some indications of it. You know, some of the polar explorers have talked about some of the things they've seen that would indicate the Earth ain't exactly uh, what it appears to be, and et cetera, et cetera, you know. Some people have made some very imaginative assumptions given those circumstances, but oh well, you know, the reality will prove itself. It really doesn't matter what people thought might have been there. The reality is that it is there. That is where we live. And in a sense, it's not even inside the earth. It's all about us, too. You see, we've just been, uh, what do you call it, uh, hosed in, contained in, put in a big old container, a womb, if you will. And that's why there could be all this unusual and aberrant activity here, because it's just the kids acting up in the playpen of the womb, you know, you know, growing much in the same way an embryo does, growing, you know, coming back to life, starting from nothing but a little speck in the seed. We went from the grandest and the greatest to the lowest and the, the worstest, in a way, but yet divine in every aspect. Of it. Look at the form of our creation, even in the physicality. It's an amazing experience to watch 
a fetus grow and develop. And we have the technologies to do that. Now, in the physical reality, we can do it in the mystical anyway. We can go right back and experience with that tiny child all of that birth, all of that, you know, right from the embryonic two cells joining outwards, you see, to the fullness of our expression, you know, and the living in the womb. We can do that so we can know exactly and remember exactly what a womb really is. So we understand the bigger cosmic mother and the womb that we're in here. Now, it's not given in that liquidy, smooth thing that we have inside of the mother as a human being or a human baby or embryo, as you wish to speak. But just the same, it's not the, it's not the same exact as that, yet it is. You know, it's, it's a replication in a metaphorical sense. Our womb that we reside in as a people, as a collective, and as one big old baby heart, Yes, indeed, that's the collective, man. The big old baby heart, but that's inside of all of us. So I call us love bunnies, because we're little baby love bunnies, and that's what we are, man, hopping around in the fields of life with our little cotton tails bristled up and looking brand new, babies, because we are. Yet we're ancient and more ancient than time itself. <laughs> Been around as the person that we are since forever and ever. And there ever is the, a beginning or an end. It's always a beginning. It's always a new start. That's our central essence. That's our reality, our part in creation. We, we exist, period. We are. I am. We was. We is. <laughs> we does because we is. We is because we does. I am because I want to be. <laughs> and I like being the want to be. How about you, man? Does that kind of thing can try to start to set you free, help even that score, help you understand it just a wee bit more? What's really going on here on this earthly floor, this earthly reality we seem so stuck upon, the gravity holding us down and giving us density and weight. But also, you know, form, babies, it's a beautiful thing. And in the feelings of the form are the realities given, man. That's, you know, what we've come here to uh, reunionate with. The divine feeling given in the organic way. You know, it's all light. It's all love. The feeling, then, is a part of that light and love. It's the flow by which the creation flow into being. You hear me talking like that all the time. But see, now you start to see that it's the feeling that creates. See, people tried to trick you into thinking it was intellect. A thought can create. Eh, not unless that thought is an energy coming forward from the heart and that thought's just part of it. It's a feeling. The energy feeling of the heart bringing creation into motion. And it's from the song of the heart that creation comes into being. That's why we so love our music, because it's reflecting back to us, in one way or another, the form of our presence, the reality of the song of our heart. And when we begin to sing it once again, verbally, this entire earth evaporates into the paradise love that it is. All that we've seen and experienced here in the dynamic of untruthful ways the hatred, the lust, the insanity dissolves away into the compost pile of experience, you know. We put that dream to rest with mucho appreciaciono. <laughs> Don't you just love my cowboy Italian Mexican <laughs> text mix? <laughs> oh, but darlings, we just I release it the same way we would a dead lover, only in without the grief and pain because we already experienced all that and we know beyond that now. We don't really leave anything, even a dream, behind. It's just the elements of it, the richness of it. That's what lives. You know, the horrifying memories, that aspect, well, shh, gone away. Never really existed in the first place. Some of the most terrifying things were just illusions, experiences we chose to create to test our heart, to stretch it into fear, into powerlessness, and to know that dynamic well, so that in our powerlessness we found, we reached into the heart and found the journey of the heart ongoing. And in sometimes our final moments in life, released from ourselves, 
the nagging injury that just would never seem to go away. It was only constantly enhanced by all the horrifying terrors we went through and totally canceled out by the sweet moments of love we were able to find in our most desperate times. That's when the sweetest seems to come our way, when we're hiding out, you know, from the enemy in some god-awful bombed-out place, and there she is, or there he is, and a moment happens, you know. And babies, it just it cancels out all the bad bullshit, the bombs, everything. It just... The energy of sweet love is so powerful and so strong. When given in innocence and in those desperate moments, guess what? All the pretense goes away. And it's just raw, urgent love. For those that can find this moment, for others it's just a passion. But it's still enough of a gateway, enough of a connection to cancel out all the horrifying things that are happening around it. That's why these loving moments occur. <clears throat> Once in a while, they'll even make a movie about it, but mostly it's only about the glory of war, you know, the idiots, you know. They miss the point. But even in hyping up the war, guess what? They cause you to seek more peace inside. You know, people should never have to live that way, and we never really did. It's a part of our dream. It's a dynamic by which we felt we could oppose one another based on the first idea that there could be a, a life taken. I mean, this is the incredible thought that we could even do that, you know. But in a clever way, it's also how we sought to extend ourselves in and out of this reality so we could experience the pleasure of it and the pain of it and all of that without ha having to actually extend our full presence into it, you see. The full presence now exists with you, however, so that that we've always seen as higher self, is emerging in this that we've always seen as lower self, the physicality. And so it's given a presence into the dream, but at the same time, it brings its presence, its surrounding, its creation with it, the real creation. And that's why I can safely say this old earth just dissolves away, and the inner earth as we've seen it comes out to play, because that's our true reality. That's where we're living. It's kind of like simultaneous life stacked one on top of another, you know, and we're kind of like here in paradise living it, here on earth living a different aspect of it. But still paradise, it's still totally parallel, it's totally in union. And so what we're experiencing now is just the union, of, you know, and not the division any longer. It, it, it won't seem separate. Spirit, higher self, whatever you wish to call it, heart, soul, regenerates and what we see of as the physical presence and dissolve I mean it does it in truth so it dissolves away all illusion you know we bring forward our whole presence in other words the whole person we don't live in partials anymore the complete presence emerges now in a sense that's the opposite of what we do when we die you know, when we die we essentially let the soul presence as we call it return to the harmony of heart, which is paradise, right? Outside of time. Each time we're born, we step back into time. Time is the presence of the dream. That's the matrix. That's all of it. Time. See, time is the illusion. It's the dream. It's the experience. But now, we be in the presence of the full life. You know, it's like we're waking up, yes, but we're waking up in our real world but we're waking up in our real world inside of this presence we've created in the dynamic of this dream. We're integrating all aspects of life, multidimensionally and parallel as well, diagonally in every which way you can think of it. You know, in other words, we expand through this final gateway and we continue to expand now into the full part of creation to understand that and be that creation. Once again, as the person that we are. And this brings forward great pleasantry upon the face of this earth. And people begin to dance and sing and party and recreate the song of the heart, you know, verbally, given from a spiritual heart that's full and complete, the angelic presence of human 
given in human form, you know, the enlightened way now, because that's the way we always play, the denser form, a part of the dynamic of the dream. So in a sense, we come and reach and pull ourselves out of it, but at the same time, we bring that kind of little thing with us and just expand it back into its real state of being. Complete and natural and utter physical change. Merging with all realities. The dream, the reality becomes one. And there is no division between higher self and lower self, and heart and soul and intellect. You know, these things are undivided anyway. Those were the misperceptions of the dream that kept them divided. They're all joined and united. That's the simple truth of the matter. As you live it, yes indeed, right here on the Coyote Medicine Show. Where else are you going to get this kind of medicine in the morning, huh? 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 Certainly not down at Joe's Coffee Shop. That's a good place to go play this radio show, though. And take your little cell phone down there and plug it into their stereo. We've got a little app over there at hazyradio.com backslash app like app. Man, and get that thing downloaded onto your smartphone or your tablet, and you can listen in, put a plug in an earphone and listen into the radio show on the go, if that's what you got to do. And you can share it with your friends, and you can plug it into your car stereo or Bluetooth it over, or however you want to do it, man. Technology is amazing these days. So you can have old Grandpa Coyote and the whole hazy crew right here in your pocket, babies, you know, uh, along for the ride, man. You know, it's like having the whole heart of humanity in your pocket, you know, and be able to pull it out and love it and embrace it anytime you want and see another aspect of it, too, another little angle you had. You ever notice that? You know, you have, like, say, a, a, a rock or a diamond or something like that, a crystal you've had around for a while. And you just keep seeing, see, every time you look at it, there's a different aspect of it showing. A slightly different coloration. A, a, there was a little indention there you didn't see before. Things like that. You start to see detail. You know. Well, babies, you know, th this is part of the clarifying vision, you know. Because our eyes are programmed to see what, you know, we want them to see, kind of. Or at least what we thought we wanted them to see. But they've been programmed, you know. And it's been proven, you know, in a certain scientific way that, you know, if you're driving down the same street every day and somebody comes in while you're gone one day, <clears throat> takes out two or three buildings, it'll be weeks before you even notice that they're gone because your eyes are still going to see the same landscape that it always saw. They're familiar with it. And so they just created it. It's automatic. It's just like your uh, browser on the Internet remembers the web pages you've been on. And unless you refresh that page every now and then, you're getting the old version of the web page because that's what it remembers. Well, see, we got stuck on the old version page quite some time ago. But somebody just hit refresh. You see? The whole thing changes. The cycles and seasons, they're ending. The season is life, and the seasoning is the life lives we have lived through the many generations of the past, and all the ancestors as well. Unity, babies, a reality of truthful love. It's time. Peace on earth. Indeed, because in truth is peace given. And that's how it's held, too. You're living in truth. Everybody is in cooperation with everyone else. Harmony. Sharing occurs, creation occurs, because we want it that way. And so we bring it that way from our heart to the most beneficial level for all who are present within it. And we do so quite cohesively with all that are in it because they're part of that singular thought and expression of the heart too. Each one in their own way, that singular expression form too. Now we can end our ideas then of separation, which of course absolves us of fear. What do there be afraid of when you're looking at yourself and yourself is no threat? And that's all you see everywhere you look. That's what you experience is yourself. Not a selfish, empty thing. Not something that has to be filled and fed like a greedy kid, you know. But no, a self that appreciates its divine aspect and the self in everything sees it well in multiplicity let's call it that 
Because it goes past all the levels. I mean, we, we are the higher, the lower, everything in between, joined energetically completely inside of the human condition called the body and soul, which is the heart, the complex of the heart. Oh, there's that sneaky old triangulation again, bringing itself back into present form. Darlings, just enjoy the roll, enjoy the ride. It continues even long after Grandpa's gone away and the coyote medicine show has faded for the day. <laughs> Babies, this stuff don't fade. It continues to grow. The gateway we stepped through this morning, you know, was very, very real in every right. And even though you may not have been present in that segment of the show, you're experiencing it just the same. And the reward that is given because of our ability to see our way clear through that divine opening. We're there, babies. We're arriving right on time. And guess what? It's 422,008. <laughs> Think about that one for a little bit. I'm going to take you for a ride, baby. And then we'll see how it does. What it reveals to you next, babies. Yeah, right here. Oh, babies on this hazy radio, man. Rock! sunrise inside as we experience this divine moment of eternal graciousness the reuniting of all the active energies of the heart at the center presence of our very being our very person our very heart all of us joined and united in this ever loving sort of way there is no real describing it there's just the experience of it as all of the disharmony dissolves into, well, call it decay, becomes a light and glittery thing, a glowing love that resonates forever strong from the center of our ever-present being. All love united then in harmony. And it grows from this tiny little seed to fulfill the need throughout humanity, don't you see? Oh, darling, the magic moment of love <laughs> given right there in your little heart by the spirit, the angel of the dove. Yes, indeed. Oh, I think you pretty much are ready, babies. Ripen up and glowing away, babies. You got that coyote heart alive inside of you today. Yes, indeed. You just joined the vibe tribe completely and wholly and unseverably, too, babies. You know, it ain't like the mafiosi. We don't try to off you if you go away. It just glows and grows and goes on forever, man. There's no stopping it. It's like a wave on the ocean. How can you stop that? You know? Well, babies, we just mended every broken heart that ever there was with a big old wave, a big old heart filled with love because we see the purity now in our experience don't you see that's what brought us together quite naturally inside of our hide and inside of this great ride we call life a unity of heart we have achieved with each other something that goes beyond what you can believe this is something we live in now in unity Will we experience our heart, these few that are here in this way, are united with everyone in every way, you see. And therefore, quite naturally, what we dream comes to be. In that creative moment of love where we worship the very life that we live, the very heart that does not only hmm, forgive, hell, it done nothing to forgive, it's all over with. There was no judgment on us in the first place. We severed that within ourselves. We made ourselves feel that way and passed it through these successive generations till the time of now when that great burden could be blessed and released from us. So therefore is the end of all trauma and pain. The great age of degeneration fulfilled us once again and brought us home to the heart of divine mastery, which means the simplicity of the humble heart given forward quite naturally 
into this creation. The innocent baby child of love, bringing itself back to life inside of the conscious presence of the human being. The human heart experiencing itself now for the first time in what seems like forever, inside of a conscious presence, inside of a human hide, baby. <laughs> yes, indeed, the smooth skin well, where we begin and extend into this creation. The energy of love that surrounds you will astound you as you come to see the glittering, glowing spectacle of your true reality. And then, babies, you can only in contentment see everything else happening quite naturally. And you let go of the judgment and whatever might be left of the pain. You ease up the burden, you let go of the brain, and you unite with the heart in this intelligent sort of way that brings forward the magic of the mystery of the song of that heart as it begins to sing and live the living work of art we call the loving expression of life life, life, life the living thing the feeling thing and in that feeling is our knowing in that feeling is our growing is then in that feeling is our ultimate destiny fulfilled we never left it, don't you see? We're always present in our conscious person. This felt separate, yes. But felt is the key word here. And what it felt then, now it feels reunited, regenerated, brought forward from the depths of the smelly old hell it created for itself back to the sweet banks, the shores of the river of life, beside the ocean of love, in the garden of paradise. Man, the mother earth, whom don't think twice. And those herds of buffalo still roam the grand prairies, and all its tall trees still stand, and the earth's hide is unpunctured by the mosquitoes upon the land. In fact, there are no mosquitoes that tor torment humans either. All of this is past and gone. The reality of truth. In that do we live on and on and on. In that single moment of time and space where we realize our true and reality place. Yeah! The reality place of being. Of being who you are. And of allowing that who to be who you are forever and ever. Because you've kept it hidden away from yourself especially, yeah? Yet how can you hide yourself from yourself? See how aspectual, how separated that can be? You know, and it's just a, a divine misperception. Given from a pure heart and therefore it's exonerated of everything that may have occurred there. It doesn't see the burden. It only sees the blessing, the truth as it returns to its rightful position at the center of our person, the center of our presence, the center of our conscious forms of expression. All of them included and combined into this one union of love, which is us, the juncture of love. The reality of life living, glowing, flowing, just being. Being. Wow. Just being. What more can we say? Just be in. Oh, darling, step forward. In these fields of life, you're meant to play. And this is your payday. This is your play day. You get out there, babies, it's not work anymore. Because you understand and you've already evened the score. And now this expands into your creation phenomenally. As you begin to change the way this world works for you, and the flow becomes a flow that flows with you naturally, in the way that only a human could have created it from its coyote little heart and the love of the dove inside it. <laughs> oh, baby, embrace it, don't write it. It's real, it's not just something you feel. It's something you live in the feeling. You see? You see the ripeness, the richness now? 
this real feeling. I mean, you, you, you see that part that could never thought it could ever feel again? It's now unreeling in feeling. I mean, it's glittery and glowing and alive. And that spreads throughout your entire conscious presence, man. That's called appreciation, gratitude, nurturance. The divine feminine in its finest of forms, whether you're masculine or not. We all bear it. We are the woman in motion, the mother of love, the creator of all sons and daughters, sons and sons that shine brightly in both their forms because there is but one form, human. We're united in that. And beyond that, our conscious form of expression and experience in the fields of love, the magnetic, glittery, glowing, cosmic plasma of creation that exists universally uh, uniting all of creation and from which creation exhibits and forms itself in these little junctures we call, you know, life, us, the human being, being, once again, in that contented way, happy as a lark, <laughs> watching itself grow into all these magical and mysterious forms that so synchronistically work together in divine harmony. A song that touches your heart and makes it even stronger as it arises in that living work of art. Oh, darling, you see, the mystery of creation is understood even in the tiniest spectacle of human form. Because we're not so tiny. We're a speck of dust, yes. Blown by the wind, yes. The wind is our love. The dust is the very source of creation. The little being of light, the little tiny specter of light from which all life creates itself. <sighs> wow. See, we share that in common with the ant <laughs> and the eagle <laughs> and the deer and the moose. <laughs> all of it put together. You see, it's all a personal form of our expression. That's why we experience it in the ways that we do and why we appreciate it as we have and as we now more fully and protectively do, but not from a fearful standpoint. The protective nature is that we allow it to be what it will be and to express itself experientially. Just let it be whatever it's created itself into. This is the beauty of personal intelligence and why tribal threads exist throughout creation, you know, and families like dog and, and bear and so forth, you know. These exist in the feathered beings and so forth as expansions of specialties in creation where the fullness of creation can experience that specialized form and be that form for a while in unity with all that is, you see. That's the unifying moment that we're experiencing now. All of life is love in motion. Every little specter of it, including this little speck that we are, love in motion, arising from the ocean, energized into being by the light and love of the earth and sun united triangulated into one. Babies, it's just beautiful to be rocking down with you in this way this morning. I appreciate your sharing of this beautiful moment in which we have recreated our reality. See, this is how simple and easy in comparison <laughs> that it is to do. We just allow ourselves to be what we want to see. If we're at peace, if we're thinking communally, if we're filled with compassion and love, the earth around us will be the same way. We'll reflect that energy back to us quite magnificently. This is how we heal every wound and fulfill our heart's desire in the process, which is to see a peaceful and real creation exhibiting itself in the most happiest of ways. <laughs> How's that for the sneakiest of plays? When Coyote slips one in on us once again, man. Oh, my darlings, what a beautiful coyote that must be. I want to unite with that family, don't you? Oh, 
Wow, we already are. Look at that, superstar. <laughs> ah, the divine union. The one moment of time when all is divine. Hey, we'll keep sharing this all the way through, man. That's what coyote medicine shows do. <laughs> we come to share the magic of reality, you know. And I hope you'll help me continue to expand this effort. You know, uh, I'm at a place where I'm really needing to do some things here, which cost me a few bucks. And the darlings, if you can share with us in any way, I would certainly appreciate it. It's thecoyoteclub.com. And coyote spelled with a K, and so is club. And you get on over there. There's a donation button on the bottom of the front page. There's little mugs and so forth that you can order uh, if you want to contribute in that way. But whatever you can do would be divinely appreciated, you know. We'll get this old party in further motion. See, we work in unity anyway. So if the harmonic heart's talking to you now, we'll listen to what it says. And I love you for it, man. What I would anyway. I love you for it, no matter what other elements might exist here. They're all, in their own way, unity. And a part of our unity. Our one love from which we will never depart. Now that it has reunited here inside of our heart. So says Grandpa on this beautiful, untwisted, fat Tuesday. Boy, I'm feeling fat too. Even though I'm skinnier than a beanpole. <laughs> <laughs> Don't this rock and roll coyote medicine show touch your soul? Bring forward your heart. Isn't this a great way to unite? Here on the Hazy Radio Network. Ooh, babies, you want to stay tuned to the Hazy Radio, man. Lots of good shows following, man, you know. The paranormal and energy drink for your soul. The paranormal seemed as normal, man, you know. You might get it through thrill chills here and there, you know, and stuff like that. Its elements is all united in this moment in time and therefore makes perfect sense in every bit of its expression, wherever and whatever it may be. <laughs> so says Grandpa, as we unravel this divine mystery. Yes, indeed. Coyote medicine in the mornings, man. It's sweet. Right here on the radio network called Hazy. HazyRadio.com. We got it on.